drinks and popcorn begin flowing again tomorrow for moviegoers in BC as several provinces lift more public health restrictions this week, even as they keep tabs on a new more virulent strain of the coronavirus. And we have had some of the Delta variant, um, particularly there is a long-term care home where we've had an outbreak and we've seen it being transmitted in a couple of areas in the province. Officials here are watching the UK, where the Delta variant has now taken over as the dominant strain, driving a spike in average weekly cases and throwing cold water on Britain's reopening plans by a month. I think it is sensible to wait just a little longer. New data from Scotland underlines the concern. The variant doubles the risk of hospital admission. Most were young, unvaccinated adults, but some had just one vaccine dose. Infections are increasing hospitalizations and hence pausing the relaxation of lockdown measures um, is entirely appropriate because it gives I mean, a greater window of opportunity to get more people vaccinated. It's a concern in Canada which used the same strategy as the UK, cover as many people with one shot as fast as possible. It was always going to be an experiment in terms of delaying the second dose. Now I think we should just look at the data for what it is and as supplies increase we should really focus on making sure that people are getting their second shots as quickly as possible. If not, health officials worry Delta could still become the dominant strain in some places and that's changing the calculus of herd immunity. We used to say 75 to 80 percent vaccine coverage but again with Delta we're not sure. Uh, certainly the the best is to have everybody vaccinated and everybody vaccinated twice. So far, only some 13% of Canadians have had both shots. Vicodopia, CBC News, Toronto. And more news on Delta from the UK tonight. Researchers say the variant has changed reports of the most common symptoms, including a headache and a runny nose. Those are new. So it's a good time to bring in Dr. Lenore Saxinger. She's an infectious diseases specialist in Edmonton. So Dr. Saxinger, what concerns you about the changing symptoms and what sort of things should people be watching out for? So I think it's important um, because, you know, there's confirmatory data needed, but people have to keep a very low threshold of suspicion for COVID infection in order to be able to protect others. So even generalized symptoms like headache, there's been some reports of things like more hearing loss, maybe related to more ear plugging, upper respiratory tract infection, um, and isolate and get tested to be able to protect others adequately against this strain as we figure out what the pattern is going to be like in our community. I guess because it's always evolving and, and, and given that, how effective do we know the vaccines are against uh, this variant? I, is there any different protection, you know, when people mix and match? Right. So um, there's good protection against infection. There's very good protection against hospitalization for both AstraZeneca and Pfizer two-dose series. There's no clinical data on AstraZeneca plus an mRNA vaccine, but immune data from lab studies does suggest a better response, which might translate eventually into higher effectiveness. And that's something that will have to be watched very carefully to help people plan what to do. Okay, as with everything, Dr. Lenore Saxinger in Edmonton, thank you. Thanks.